Now, some of you, I know you're thinking it, even though you didn't ask it. Jeff, when you move the speakers, which, which are at the top of the screen, when you move them out from the corner into the corner, aren't you changing the sound? Well, yeah, because as you move things more into a corner, things take on a different kind of tone. As you move them out of a corner, things open up. And yes, there is compensation for it. On the subwoofer, there's a control, and it'll just simply be marked um, A, B, C, D. You really, you have to look in the owner's manual, look at the position that you've mounted the screen, either dead in the corner, on the ceiling a couple of feet out, on the wall a couple of feet down, A, B, C, or D will correspond to those positions and will equalize the sound accordingly to make it sound natural and not like me with my cold right now. On that, it's okay. Question? Screen, 100 inches. It's a matte white screen. Uh, it's of about a unity gain, about one. So uh, our projector has tons of brightness, so at any distance, the image should look bright and punchy. It's weighted at the bottom. Uh, in order to make the screen adjustment for height, you don't have to do it mechanically. Again, another you know, overcoming an objection of, oh, this is going to be hard to install. You just take the clicker, which some of you may recognize as a universal MX350. It comes pre-programmed to run the system already. And all you do is you press menu, and you bring up the word projection. And it'll have three buttons, up, down, and stop. So once you get this thing, you press on, your system lights up press projection, adjust the height of the screen, up or down. You'll find from the end of the white material to the full run of black material at the top is about 10 inches. So you have an adjustment of about 10 inches up and down. And what you do is you go up, down, up, down, and stop. When you finally get it right, you hit set, set, and you're done. Every time the screen drops, it will drop to that height. So the alternative is ugly. Allen wrenches, adjusting the height, ratcheting it down. Ugly things that scare people from doing this. So that's the screen. Any, any question on the screen? The speakers, all of the speakers, left, center, right, subwoofer, speakers that are in the cradle, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, have all been done by Atlantic Technologies. Uh, Epson is an imaging and a projector company. Uh, Sound is not our, our expertise, so we went to a Consumer Electronics Hall of Famer, uh, Peter Tribeman. Uh, his company, uh, Atlantic Technologies, is very well known, very respected as a value for the dollar company. That's where we live at Epson. We're not the most expensive, but we are reasonably priced. We try to give a ton of performance for that price. Atlantic Technologies does the same thing. So Peter really did his homework. Uh, even though the speakers are up high, when you are sitting in front of it, guess what? Where's the image in the sound field? Is it too high? Is it too low? No, it's right in your face in front of you. It's exactly at the perfect height. Sound from the rears, the two effect speakers. I knew that. <laughs> are built into the cradle, which holds the projector. Uh, this is fairly hefty because of the, you know, it's got the, the, the speakers have some heft to them. But this would be above and behind you. The projector fits in upside down and bolts in here. And then it is held by this piece that goes here that bolts to this piece that goes to the ceiling unless you need a little bit more drop or height, in which case this widget comes off and this extension stick goes on, and then that bolts to this. Okay. All of those accessories come with it? All of those accessories come with it. This is the brains of the unit. This is where your sources are connected to. Um, this has one major co cable, an umbilical cord, that attaches to the subwoofer, because this contains the power. Whereas this is the brains and the control, this is the power for the system. So there's, you look on the back, you can see there's multiple HDMIs, component input. There's actually USB for your computer and so on. Now, when you're running the system, do you shoot your uh, clicker at the brain? No, that would be too, too complicated because 
your screen might be over here, but your controller might be over there. So this is not a natural motion. What is a natural motion is just quick draw, shoot it at the screen. The subwoofer contains all of the power, all of the amplification for the system. Also has, you know, acoustic controls, also has a few little tweaky things to make the sound a little bit better. It does have a little crossover points. In general, when you're recommending to folks how to tune the audio part of their system, there are two mistakes that people generally make. One is the surround speakers are too loud, and number two, the subwoofer is too loud, and also number three, the center channel is too loud. If you reduce the volume of the center channel uh, a bit, maybe one or two clicks below the left and right, your sound feel will tend to open up. When the center's too loud, it'll tend to collapse. Okay. If the rears are too loud, if you're going like this, yeah, it's too loud. I mean, that's just a, an obvious thing. And the subwoofer, some people like it heavy. In general, this should give you a goodly amount of bass for most rooms. If the room is gigantic or made of stone, which is not friendly to bass response, this does have an output where you could actually hook a second subwoofer in, no problem. But in general, front facing, fired this way. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think it's either an 8 or 10 inch subwoofer. Front facing should give you good bass. If you do need more than that, you can certainly take advantage of the wall effects, the two pi effects by having it, you know, shooting toward a wall or, or into a wall.